Hello everybody, welcome to our new video cast lesson series. My name is Mr. Harvey and today we're going to be talking about expectations. In science there is a test called the chi-square test. It's actually a statistics test and the whole thing is all about probability, what we expect. And no, it is not chi, so it is not what you see here. It's pronounced chi. It's named after the Greek letter, well, looks like kind of like this and with a little square there, so chi-square test. Speaking of probability, let's talk gambling. I know what you're thinking, I actually don't gamble, believe it or not. In fact, I'm a pretty terrible gambler when it comes down to it. One time, a friend of mine bet that I would lose $20 at casino faster than him, and well, I lost that bet. But I still find casinos really interesting. Have you ever walked inside? Everyone looks like they're having a great time throwing their money on the table. But have you ever looked up in a casino? If you look at the ceiling, all over are those little black domes. And inside those domes are cameras. And somewhere in that casino, there is a person sitting in a room looking at nothing but TV screens everywhere. What exactly are they looking for? What casino security are looking for is something unexpected. Let's talk about the odds for a moment. This is called two of a kind, two queens there, very low hand in poker, but a good chance of getting it, 42%. This is called three of a kind, those three sixes there, a little better hand, but a much lower chance of getting that, only 2%. Take a look at this one. This is a straight flush. The ace there acts like a one for you who don't play poker, and those cards are all in a row, and they're all the same suit. Incredibly good hand, but very low odds of getting it, 0.0014%. So when someone goes into a casino and starts gambling, what they're, the security is looking for is something unexpected. They know these odds, and they know if they see someone beating them, something is up. And this is where chi-square comes in. Chi-square is all about expected versus observed. Are you getting exactly or close to what you would expect? So the chi-square test was designed to compare what you observe with what you expect and see if those two numbers are different or close to each other. Here's the formula. There's our symbol chi, and the formula is O minus E squared over E. And what those uh, letters stand for, O is observed, so it's how many of a certain result you got, and E is expected. Okay. And so chi-square can tell us if the results of anything come close to what we expect. So let's do an experiment. Let's take a coin flip. Very easy experiment to work with. In a coin flip, you have two possible outcomes, heads and tails, and we know that the chance of each is 50-50. Let's do an actual experiment. Let's say we flipped a coin 20 times and got this, nine heads and 11 tails. Now there's a key component of chi-square, and that is this thing you see right here called null hypothesis. And don't worry too much about the null. The keyword here is hypothesis. We are looking at a basic hypothesis. Now, null hypothesis means this, basically, that there is no relationship between two variables. So, for example, if I'm doing an experiment and I have two variables, x and y, the null hypothesis basically says that there is no relationship between these two variables. However, we also have what we call an alternate hypothesis. And the alternate hypothesis is that there is some kind of relationship. So like if I take X and I increase it or decrease it, that somehow affects Y. So when doing chi-square, sometimes it's helpful to make a table. It's not necessary, but it's a helpful little uh, thing for going through the steps. Let's take a look at what's here. If you notice on the end there, that is our chi-square formula, O minus E squared over E. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in so you see how this works. So the first thing we do is I'm just gonna write in under the result here, uh, heads and tails. Those were the two different uh, results we got. So those aren't numbers. Then we write in our observed. If you remember in our experiment, we had nine heads and 11 tails. Then we write in the next column what we expected. Of course, out of 20 flips, we would expect 10 heads and 10 tails. And then the rest of this takes us through the math steps. Notice this is basically building the chi-square uh, equation one step at a time. So we do in the first row, O minus E is nine minus 10. That becomes negative one. Don't worry about the negative, that's gonna cancel out real quick. Then we take uh, 11 minus 10 and we also get uh, positive one. 
Notice in the next step, we then square that. So one squared is just one, and then one squared again is also one. The last step is to then take those and divide by the value. So we're gonna take this first one here, okay? Uh, this one right here, and we're gonna divide it by this same expected value. That gives us uh, 0.1. Now, the second row, we actually end up with the same thing. One divided by 10, again, so that's 0.1. And then to get chi-square, what we're going to do is take the sum of all the values in this last column. So if we add those together, that gives us a chi-square of 0.2. And there is our chi-square. Okay, so the next step is to bring our chi-square over to this table, and this is called a distribution table. Let's show you some of the components of our distribution table. At the top of the table here, we have these numbers one through five, and those are called degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is essentially how many outcomes you have in any trial minus one. So take our coin flip, for example. There were two possible outcomes in our coin flip. The coin could have landed either heads or tails. We take that two and subtract one, and we get a degree of freedom of one. Think of it this way. If you flip the coin, it's got to land up heads or tails. Degrees of freedom is like how many other things could it have been? In this case, if it's tails, it only could have been heads. That's the only other possibility. The next thing in our distribution chart here is the probability. Now, this is read as percent. So like the first number, 0 0.05, that's 5%. Now, what does that mean? Okay. In an ideal world, we would do science experiments over and over and over again and try to get the same results or close to the same results over and over and over again. Problem is we can't do science experiments that many times. So probability tells us this. If hypothetically I were to repeat my same coin flip experiment, flipping the coin 20 times, if I did that 100 times, I should get at least five out of 100 times the exact results I got, which if you remember were nine and 11. That's what that 5% probability means. It means at least 5% of the time, I should get these exact results that I got just doing the experiment once. The last part of this table are these critical values. And I'm gonna show you right now how we use the critical values. So let's take our experiment. We had, uh, remember, one degree of freedom and our chi-square was 0.2. What we do is we bring that over here and we look at this first column because we have one degree of freedom and we are looking for at least a 5% probability of getting the results we got. To do that, we look to see if our chi-square is under this number right here, 3.84. Indeed, our chi-square is really low under that. What does that mean? That is a good sign. It means that our results are acceptable. It means that these outcomes of nine and 11, nine heads, 11 tails, is close enough to what we'd expect to say, hey, nothing crazy happened. So we did it. Our chi-square was acceptable, and that means we can also accept the null hypothesis. What is that, you ask? Well, at the beginning of the experiment, if you remember, I said that the coin should not affect the outcome. In other words, the coin itself shouldn't have any effect really on whether the result is heads or tails. So in this case, our null hypothesis uh, was that the object itself was not a variable. And that turned out to be true because our results were close enough to what we would expect. Now, what if we had gotten something really, really odd? Like say, for example, we got two heads and 18 tails. Most likely, if we did a chi-square of that, we would reject the null hypothesis. And in that case, we would have to accept an alternate hypothesis. For an alternate hypothesis, we could come up with a lot of things. We could say that the coin was rigged, that I cheated, that the data was all fudged. There could be a lot of different possible explanations. But the beauty of chi-square is that we can tell whether our experiment is doing what we think it should. And in science, that's pretty valuable.